Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be building this 135th scale Yag Panther G1 from Meng. Now despite building quite a good number of models over the last few years, it occurs to me that I haven't actually built a panther or any variant of a panther. But the previous Meng models I've made have been very good and so I was really looking forward to making this kit. So the Yag Panther of course combines the panther chassis with the 88mm Pac-43 anti-tank gun which was similar to the gun in the Tiger II. Production of the Yag Panther didn't start until January 1944 and there were only just over 400 of them built. There were two versions of the Yag Panther built. This is the G1, the earlier version. The G2 had several changes including the engine deck, changes to the gun mantlet and changes to the gun itself. And for this earlier G1 version, Early versions of the G1 had the Zimmerit anti-magnetic mine paste and versions of the G1 after September 1944 did not. And as is often the case with these things, there were some hybrid versions that had some features of the G1 and some features of the G2. And back to the kit and you can see that the lower hull has built up very nicely, it's got some sturdy braces inside it there. The upper hull is an interesting construction. It has this initially very flimsy um, internal piece and it requires the engine deck in there to give that piece some rigidity. And as that fits on top of the lower chassis, the armor plated pieces then fit on top of that to build it up to the correct thickness. As we'd expect in a modern kit, the engine deck has photo etched grills. There's also quite a lot of internal detail on the gun. There's no other internal detail, but you could conceivably leave one of the hatches open and look inside to see that gun. There's a choice of three different mantlets, here with slightly different bolt styles and one with no bolts whatsoever. The instructions don't always tell you which piece to use for which paint scheme and even when they do they don't always tell you particularly why that should be. For example if it was made by a certain manufacturer or made in a certain time period. So you will need to do some research if you've got a very specific vehicle that you want to build. In a similar fashion there are several different options for the exhausts and for the layout of the jack. The fit here was all very nice, there were no significant issues. Part of the side skirts here are supplied as photo etch and you will need some way of bending those there. There's about a one or two millimeter overhang that needs bending down. The instructions require you to drill plenty of holes into the side of the casemate for the different versions. You do need to be a bit careful to make sure you get the right ones and as you will see in the final image I did drill a hole in the wrong place on one of those.
It's possible to attach this rear hatch so that it remains workable, although as I said before there is no real internal detail apart from that uh, gun breech. The armour side skirts are very nicely made and they just slot onto the uh, carrier hooks. No glues required. And of course I left those off until the end so I could paint both them and the main body separately. I primed the inside of the vehicle and then gave it a coat of black acrylic paint. These are just cheap artist acrylics and that's just to hide the fact that there's nothing inside there really. Then I primed the outside with some grey Tamiya primer and went over any of the dark shadow areas with a black. And then this seems to be happening quite a lot to me recently but I seem to have lost the footage of the painting process. But nevertheless I gave the vehicle a coat of dark green and then of dark brown in a stripe pattern. I went for this as a kind of late 1944 scheme where the base colour would be dark green. Originally I was going to add the dark yellow on either side of the dark brown stripes, but I really liked the paint scheme like this, and I decided not to add the yellow. As with most German vehicles, there are minimal markings, and these ones from Meng went down without any issues using a small amount of uh, mark set. The tracks are supplied as individual links, and then the guide horns are hollow, but they must be individually added to each track piece, which does take some time. Although the connection points on the track pieces are very good, and it's not difficult to add them, it just takes time. However, it is worth making sure that the inner road wheels will fit between those guide horns once you've made those pieces. At this stage, I didn't want to do a huge amount of weathering on the vehicle because I haven't quite decided the setting that I wanted in but I did use some thinned Abteilung 502 dark brown oil paints to do a pin wash around the details to bring the contrast out there. And as a bit of an experiment, I used some flat earth and some buff with a tiny amount of light grey, thinned very heavily, about 80% thinner, and sprayed over the vehicle as an initial dust coat. And I'll be adding much more weathering to this in a future video. But until then, let's see the kit so far. Well guys, there we go, that was my Meng 135th scale Jag Panther. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I know I didn't go into a huge amount of detail with the weathering, but that will come in a future video. I'd like to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. 
Their support means a great deal to the channel and is highly appreciated, so thank you very much guys. And whether or not you are a Patreon supporter, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you did like this video, then please do consider giving it a like or subscribe. And if you have any ideas, comments, suggestions, then please feel free to add a comment below. And until next time guys, have fun modelling.